these tightened rules at preschool centres follow a slew of other measures announced last night. To recap, people will only be allowed to gather in groups of five, down from eight currently. This will apply to households as well, which can only receive five distinct visitors a day. For workplace rules, no more than 50% of employees can return to the office, particularly if they're able to work from home. Social gatherings at the office should be avoided as well. And indoor gyms and fitness or health studios will be shut as they are considered higher risk settings. But outdoor exercise classes may still continue with a limit of 30 people and with safe distancing measures in place. Well, joining us now is Professor Dale Fisher, a senior infectious diseases consultant from the National University Hospital. He also chairs the National Infection Prevention and Control Committee. Welcome back, Professor. As Minister Lawrence Wong said last night, these measures will bring us back to phase two. Now, sentiments on the ground range from some saying these curbs too strict, all the way to those calling for another circuit breaker. Where do you stand on this spectrum? Actually, Harry Anto, there's, there's no one better to make these decisions actually than those people doing the investigations. So MOH has teams of experts that have been doing this for, for way before the pandemic, actually, uh, for, for other infectious diseases. But uh, they're really very experienced now. They, they can see all the data. They can look at the cases. They can do the contact tracing. They can see, see the hotspots. They can see if there's uh, a big chance of cases being missed. So, so I think it's um, uh, we, we're well entitled to, to trust the system in this case. Um, remember, a circuit breaker to go all the way, that really means you've lost control. That, that really means uh, that, that it's, it's run away from you and you say, look, the only way we can get this under control is if everybody really goes home. We put in really extreme social measures because we're not sure where the virus is. Uh, we have a lot more capacity still uh, than having to, to go to that extreme, I think. Um, uh, I'm not saying we won't get there. I certainly hope uh, we don't get there. But, uh, but I, I think a circuit breaker would be premature at this stage. Uh, I think uh, there's a good chance that all the public health systems in place will do the job that they're, uh, they're designed for and what, what they've been practicing to do. Um, of course, bringing in some more stringent society measures uh, is like an added layer of protection, if you like, saying, you know, just in case anyone slips through our net, it would still be good if we had, uh, had smaller crowds and things like that. So, so, so I'm fully supportive, actually, of, of, of the stance at the moment. Right. Well, we're not at um, a situation where the circuit breaker has to be reintroduced, but one of the biggest curbs that will be re reintroduced from May 8th is the closing of indoor gyms and fitness studios. Prof, gyms weren't closed during phase two last year. So what do you make of the, the reimposition of these gym closures? Because, you know, we haven't seen an outbreak at any gym so far. Well, I must say, I don't know the, the detail, but, but um uh, nor for that matter why they, they weren't part of phase two before. But nonetheless, if you think about them, they're uh, often small rooms, um, uh, significant numbers of people. There's a lot of uh, people not wearing masks. There's a lot of deep breathing because of the exertion with, with doing the, the physical exercise. So I can see why they're a, they're a sort of a high risk setting. So uh, without knowing the, the sort of specifics of, of, uh, of whether there is a, a particular concern there, it, it certainly makes sense. And it has been practiced in many other countries that gyms, unfortunately, are, are quite early to go you know, in a way like nightclubs for the, for the same sort of reasons.